Aloha Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lowe and I'm your grateful friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii, where 45 very diverse hosts takes you on a journey into their worlds. I'd like to start today's show with wishing everyone a happy Thanksgiving. I personally feel that Thanksgiving should be celebrated every day. As long as you wake up, you should be grateful. Is that correct? You're waking up, you have something to be grateful for. So today our topic of discussion will be on opening a healthy access to at-risk youth and bringing communities together. How do we prevent leaving people, especially our keiki, out of a society that has such abundance? Today's discussion is one and on the idea that bounds, um, that, that bounds made through sports can break down the barriers created by the economic class divide. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that all kids deserve the best education and opportunities available to them, no matter their parents' income level. Today, we are very honored to welcome Jordan Conley, who I just met about a couple weeks ago, and I was so impressed with what his heart said and how he shares it with the Keiki of Hawaii. He is a co-founder slash program designer of Hapa Mana. Welcome, Jordan. Thank so, you, Wendy. You're welcome. So, Jordan, tell us about what is Hapa Mana? Well, Hapa Mana is a um, athletic, a nonprofit athletic sports club. Mm -hmm. We um, bring free athletic weekend athletic camps to, uh, to Nia Village. We also do after-school programs for uh, IHS, Kunia Village, and Kahoiki. Wow, so you're spread all over the place. I guess the need is great. The need is great. The need is great. And I, and I look at it where you're pretty much focusing on the west side of the islands. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Last year we had two uh, camps at Waianae High School also. Oh, wow. And, you know, my heart is the west side. I'm from Miley. I'm a titter chick from Miley. So <laughs> when I heard that that was your heart, I was so excited to uh, join forces with you and see how we can work together because we have the same heart and I know that we can accomplish much together with yourself and your wife Claire. So tell us about you. Just tell us more about who you are. So um, I'm from Dayton, Ohio. I played uh, sports all my life. Uh, I wrestled, played basketball, football, baseball, um, soccer, ran track. Uh, and so I've always I just liked to play all sports and then I came out here, I started playing volleyball, hiking and stuff and I um I just I went I, I did an after school program a couple of years ago and just was doing sports and I, I had all these kids that, that they needed you <laughs> they did they didn't they have, needed you because you were doing it you knew what it was all about and so you wanted to give back I'm sure exactly right and you saw the the desperate need that we have and so that's a critical hour of the day when the Kiki are done with school. And now they don't go home, they're gonna hang out, they're either gonna get in trouble. Um, a few of them will go and study in study hall, or some of them will go to the boys and girls pro programs, which we have a few of them on the islands. But your program is so key because you're focusing these students in the field and what they wanna be doing, sports, right? Yes, so, and when I look at you, I look at you, I think you're like a hapa man, you look Hawaiian haole, right? <laughs> but I know you're not, but I know you look hapa. So, how did Hapa Mana start? Okay, so like I, as I said, I used to work with the after school program and it was at Dole Middle School. Mm -hmm. And so they only paid their after school people $10 an hour, which isn't very much, right? And so when I started, they made us sign a contract that said that we would be there for the year because they said that uh, the kids would um, you know, be upset if somebody left, the teacher they liked left during the year. So that actually happened. It wasn't me, but another teacher left. And when they told the kids, they all started crying and they oh. really, it was really hard for them and stuff. The guy had got a job on the docks, which he said he just couldn't pass up because oh, it was just yes. a well-paying job. Right. So he would come back every now and then, and he'd bring like McDonald's and stuff and sit mm -hmm. with the kids and hang out with the kids. And they really, really loved him and stuff. But uh, when I saw that, it's, like you said, it's the most important time for kids, right? It's the time when they're out of school to when the parents get home. They, they need direction. They don't have nothing to do. That's when they can get in trouble. That's when kids get kidnapped and stuff a lot. That's when the most bad stuff happens to kids. Right. So my goal is to try to build a program where we can be with the kids at those hours, you know, and then the whole future goal is to be able to stipend our coaches and maybe even make living wage jobs for when kids really need us to be around the most. Wow. So uh, that's a big goal and it's going to take a lot of money. And I know that or I can already feel 
There's some fundraising opportunities that we're going to be discussing in the future, and I think that's why Keokua brought me to your side. Um, so, well, we'll talk about that. That'd be another show. Right but why do you feel organizations such as Hapamana is so necessary in our society today? Like, as we said, the, the after school part where kids really need us there, mm -hmm. but also, kids, uh, well, where we go, the kids can't afford it. Like, uh, there's kids who can be on teams and whatnot, but like, we go to low income and homeless areas where kids basically couldn't afford to afford our services at all. So we, we go, we give it to them free, and we, we want to include all kids, all keiki, all people really in society. You know, we want to help just bring everybody together, and, and those who don't have access, we want to try to help give them access, bring wow. them access. That's so key. I mean, and usually um, you put them together in sports camps. Uh, my daughters played volleyball and basketball, so they would have, like, different coaches from or players from the mainland come in and do sports camps. And I thought that was so critical because it would motivate them and encourage them to get up to higher levels of playing. And so um, it has helped my daughters uh, going to a sports camp. But so tell me, what exactly are your sports camps and what are they like? So at our sports camps, we do pretty much every sport I can find a coach for. We mm -hmm. have a Taekwondo coach that comes to every camp. I coach basketball and football, we do ladder drills. Claire does soccer. We also have volleyball coaches. We have, um, I already said Taekwondo, we have Kung Fu. We have different MMA. We also have a Capoeira club that comes out every now and then. And we have personal trainers from some of the top clubs all over Oahu. Uh, the Honolulu Club sends personal trainers. Um, one is from the Outrigger Waikiki. And so they, uh, you know, we have personal trainers do different things with the kids, you know, just different training stuff, uh, strength and conditioning and all that. So they get that. And we also partner with um, Challenge Island Oahu or Challenge Island Oahu and Rise Above, which are educational groups. And they come out and Challenge Island does STEAM stuff. So they do like engineering stuff. And then Rise Above is our tutor. And he, uh, he spends Sundays tutoring the kids and just helping them with uh, getting their grades up and all that. Wow, that's, that's the most important. It's not just sports and play ball. Come on, guys, let's you know, shoot some hoops and all that. But you're giving them all the different aspects of success. And unfortunately, sometimes these kids don't have that from their mentors or their peers at home. So that's why I think this program is so key, so key, and just spending time with them, giving them that extra hug or a good job, and that's truly what they need because they're not sometimes getting that at home. Right. And so you're, you're right on track with that, giving them the quality that they need. And like you said, with more funding, you can bring in more coaches and maybe higher levels of coaches that you can bring these kids up to different levels to build up their self-esteem and their self-confidence so that they can excel in sports as well as excel in school academics, as well as just being a better person and a better friend. And I know a lot of this comes from you have life lessons that you teach your students. So I want you to share with us six life lessons that you teach through your, your programs. So our life lessons, we use um, Hawaiian words. Mm -hmm. So hapa, like hapa mana, hapa is, uh, it means mix or integrate in Hawaiian. And so mm -hmm. we want our kids to, Get out in society and talk to people, mix in society, uh, be an active member of society. Aloha Aina is love for the land. We wanted to take care of the land. We wanted to start doing cleanups and such when, uh, as soon as we can. Ohana, Ohana, Ohana means family. We mm -hmm. want them, uh, Hapamana, to be like their second family. And we want them to treat each other like family. Kekala is excellence. We want them to strive to be their best. You know, always work your hardest, do, do the best you can. Pono is righteousness. You know, always do the right thing. Uh, if somebody needs help, help them out. And onipa'a, steadfast, uh, you know, uh, perseverance, you know, just do, um, you know, work hard and, you know. Just excel. Right, don't and give up. And just max out who Ke Keokuo created them to be. Exactly. And, you know, what, what I see right there is what you're doing is you're creating a community. Yes. You know, a community so that they don't have time to bully and pick on each other and make fun because they themselves are growing. And when they're growing, they don't have time for anything else except what you guys are teaching them. And those uh, life lessons are so key. And um, maybe one day we can find you a sponsor that can make that into a card. and They can always have it in their back pocket so uh -huh. that they can always resource that and say, oh, oh, yeah, Ohana, remember, would you do that to a family member? You know, and, and, and just keep reminding them and then helping them to live Pono with each other. And you're creating this very uh, safe community for them. And I think that's the best thing you can do for these uh, students, not just giving them the abilities uh, and the, the coaching skills or their sports, but you're, you're a coach, you're a life coach. That's so key in this program that you're doing. 
You didn't even know that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, what you're doing is a big commitment. You're working with not just one housing project, not with, with just one community. You're working with uh, the whole West Side. And that's a massive community that really needs more and more programs. And I truly believe that um, church or faith based or, you know, community based or private based organizations like yourself need to just come along and just implement more and more of these programs because you set your ground rules and then you mandate it, and then you fulfill it. So you can run it the way you need to, and you know the needs of the students. So it makes so much sense. So the big commitment that requires so many partnerships and organizations, I know you mentioned a few, like IHS, huge. Right. I mean, Connie Mitchell from IHS, she's doing a fabulous job with all the different projects that she has going on throughout the state, not just the West Side, but I know her focus is a lot of programs there on the West Side. So I know that you partner a lot with her and you have her in your back pocket. Um, so I know IHS, and then could you share with us some of the other partners that you are working with? So Kunea Village Development Corporation, they're a nonprofit low-income housing uh, community. It used to be an old Do uh, Del Monte plantation. Uh, mm -hmm. They would house the workers there. I think it was around 2005-ish. They, they sold it to uh, uh, Kunea Village. I think they sold it to them for like $10, but the agreement right. was to keep it um, for the uh, affordable housing. Uh, Rise Above is a... Um, is a tutoring and test prep uh, organization. Mm -hmm. They SAT and ACT test prep, and they also tutor. They, um, they you know tutor most subjects, and so they come to our stuff, our camps on Sundays. And we're also trying to find a day where they can they can go to IHS. We're just trying to work out the logistics. Um, That's a lot of different components. And do you have staff, or is it just you and Claire, or how is this? Um, run? Me and Claire run it pretty much. Uh, we have volunteers that tell us what they can do, and we send them where we want them to go, kind mm -hmm. of, or where places would like them to go. But uh, when it comes to the computer work, the back office work, it's just me and Clara. Wow. I mean, in a way, I mean, that's how I work uh, most effectively is when I just depend on me, and like you have your wife, Claire, so you can depend on each other and the work gets done. And it's not like you didn't do it, you know, and pass the <laughs> buck, because you have to hold each other accountable. So I like that aspect, but soon enough with more and more programs growing, and when the word gets out more, because there are so many kids that don't even know about your programs, and that you would be able to, you know, come alongside them and invite them to this community that you're creating. I think it's so, so key. So um, I know that you don't just focus on sports. I know you have, all, I mean, like mental and emotional coaching as well as nutritional coaching. And I know that that's a key uh, um, part in your programs as well, is teaching them about good nutrition. What do you do about that part? Well, so we also, we're not partnered with, but we work with Hawaii Pacific Health, mm -hmm. and a lot of their staff will come and volunteer. So when they're here, we have um, them speak about nutrition and whatnot, about uh, the different food on the plates. So when we, we feed them lunch every camp, so we give them a free lunch, and we give them carrots, cucumbers, tomatoes, sometimes peppers. And then we, you know, we buy chips and sandwiches for them, but they're not allowed to have chips unless they get the vegetables. So, oh, good, so, good, good. And then we sit down with them, and they ask us about the different stuff on the plate, and so we talk about it. I'm not necessarily a nutritionist, but we do talk about, you know, eating right, eating healthy, and a couple of times they brought in a bag of chips to the gym, and I tell them that they can't bring in a bag of chips and that they got to leave them out. And one of the moms actually, uh, the kid gave it back to the mom, and she's like, I like you. Yes, <laughs> you know, so. yes, yes. You're going to be their best friends because it's not the mom and the dad saying don't eat it, it's the coach. Right. And you have a lot of authority in these young men's and women's lives. So use it. And, uh, <laughs> and if at any time you need us to come in and back you up with any kind of uh, nutritional tidbits, as well as I represent the American Diabetes Association. I'm a board of directors for the last 10 years. And if you need any of our directors to come in and speak to your students, we'd be loving to do that because be we've got to catch them young. Yeah. We've got to catch them young. And then if they develop better eating habits, they're going to be healthier adults, and that's what we firmly believe. No, we would love that. We take anybody and any skill they have, and we, could give it to, we want to give it to our kids. I tell somebody if they like to cook and they want to teach our kids to cook, that's good. Like Any skill that you have that you mm -hmm. feel like you want to teach somebody else, we'll take that. Sign me up. Right well, right now, Jordan, we will take a, a one-minute break. So we're going to take a break and give you a, a drink of water and take uh, some time to rethink of what next <laughs> you want to share with the audience. But uh, we'll be back in 60 seconds. Mahalo. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines. I was the head coach for the Punahou Boys varsity tennis team for 22 years, and we we're fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my book, which is also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about leadership. 
creating a superior culture of excellence, achieving and sustaining success, and finding greatness. If you're a student, parent, sports or business person, and want to improve your life and the lives of people around you, tune in and join me on Mondays at 11 a.m. as we go beyond the lines on Think Tech Hawaii. Aloha. Hi guys, I'm your host Lillian Kumik from Lillian's Vegan World. I'm, I come to you live every second Friday from 3 p.m. And this is the show where I talk about the plant-based lifestyle and veganism. So we go through recipes, some upcoming events, uh, information about health, regarding your health, and uh, just some ideas on how you can have a better lifestyle, eat healthier, and have fun at the same time. So do join me. I look forward to seeing you. and. Uh, Aloha. Aloha and welcome back to Think Tech Hawaii's Take Your Health Back with Wendy. Today I'm so honored to have Jor Jordan Conley who runs and operates with his wife this amazing program that helps not just the kids of the West Side but if you want to drive on over to any of the locations that he has programs going on your kids are always welcome. And I, I am going to ask Jordan one question. You know, you work a lot with the kids. Are the parents allowed to stay to watch? Oh, yes, ma'am. Um, a lot of times the parents will stay and actually volunteer. Like, ah. so um, if there's a parent that has an athletic skill, they can help coach that athletic skill. Or if they just want to help, like, clean up or corral the kids, whatever the parent wants to do, they can, they can are welcome to stay and help. Or if they just want to sit and watch, that's fine, too. We got chairs and seating around. They can sit down, just hang out, and watch your kids play. That's, you know, I mean, that's one sign of success. You're open to many different, you know, different s scenarios. And I like that. I mean, even I just met Jordan and Claire about two weeks ago. And I really, really loved your heart and your message about your organization, Hapa Mana, and uh, what it's doing for the community of uh, especially the West Side. But the fact that you are so open and saying, yeah, I want to share this message with people. I want to encourage more Kiki to come out. And, and that you even open the, your programs up to the adults. That, to me, is a true sign of success. Because when your kids' parents are there, they are even, they're going to perform even better because now mom and dad are watching. And then when the parents are there, they get a vested interest in there. Right? And then now, if, you know, like if I come and hang out at your camp, my goal would be to make those the parents Build the community with the parents and get their support. Right, because right. once you get them to buy in and work with you, I tell you the success of your program, because they're so grateful that you're putting in your time to guide their, their children, um, money cannot buy that. That's kind of another one of our long-term goals is we want to start teams that uh, play all over the island, and we want to get t uh, kids from different parts of the island on the same team. Mm -hmm. And that way... We have parents from different parts of the island that go to the same practices and the same games. Yes. And they have kids on the same team. They can build the bonds that, you know, team sports create. And then we can take that over, uh, you know, the divide that, you know, class mm -hmm. creates, you know, class divide creates. So. Right. Wow. See, a lot of programs. I mean, it's just going to continue to grow. Um, I know you don't sleep a lot because <laughs> I, <laughs> I was texting you and you were saying I'm going to be up at three and then I texted you at four or four or five or whatever. Four, this, it was four this morning. Yeah, you said I'm up now. I'm like, okay, but give me 30 minutes. I got to drive to Waikiki. <laughs> so, I mean, I went to bed like at two and I was up at 430. So I'm like, yes. <laughs> so I said, I met my male match, you know, his love and his passion for the community. And then he not just talks about it. He walks the talk and he puts it into action and making a lot of differences in many of the Kiki's lives. And the best part as well, you're going to make differences in the families as you build this community. So, you know, I was sharing with uh, you earlier how blessed you are because as an organization that you are, you already have a, a, an address that you claim as home. So yes. this address happens to be in Cunha, yes, it does. right? And so tell me, tell me about your camps and how you acquired it. Okay, so we started in 2016, um, September 2016. So we're just over three years old. Um, the first year we tried to get our name out and tried to find places to do camps, which is mm -hmm. very hard. Um, you know, it's expensive to rent out a lot of places and just a lot of places if you haven't done something, just say no. You know, they're mm -hmm. like, oh, we don't know who you are, whatever. So last year, I got a connection with Waianae High School and Keikoa, their athletic director, he let us come and he gave us their gym and football field. We threw two camps there. And so we actually had to drive our stuff out there, a whole bunch of stuff, 
So this is Cunea Village right here. This is our gym that we have now. Wow, look it's, at that setting. It's 92-1770 Cunea Road, and that would be the address. Mm -hmm. But um, so last year when we were taking, well, so there we can leave all our stuff there. We have, you know, probably 20 basketballs, 10 footballs, Oh, because that's soccer. home, right? Yeah, that's home. So we leave mm -hmm. all our stuff there. We got two big old uh, cage type deal things where we put all our balls. We got kick pads for Taekwondo. We got two of the big water jugs to, you know, to give the kids water and all that. So it makes it a lot easier to have that place. We, um, For sure. Yeah, so we had to drive it all out to Y&I last year and then bring it home and then drive mm -hmm. it back. And so, again, we had to bring it home. We kept all that stuff in our little Hawaii place, you know. So right. we don't, there's not a lot of room out here. So right. half our house was filled with sports gear. <laughs> now we got a kind of Yay. open house, not all the way. But. You're blessed. And you're, as you bless others, you're going to get more blessings. Trust me, it happens this way. Right. So okay. keep doing good as you are. And I tell you, the doors will open. And, you know, when more people know and learn more about your heart, they will and they'll come. Yeah, and so partner, like what you're doing with the different organizations, and they too can help you as far as, you know, a lot of these groups are, you know, even like the Rotarians, the Lions groups, they fundraise. And once you get to know, they get to know your programs, you may be on their list to say, you know what, this year we're going to fundraise for you to help you implement more, you know, um, staff or more food, you know, better quality of food for the kids. Whatever your needs are, write it out. Put it out there, and your, your prayers shall be answered. Trust me, I know it works, okay? So um, I know you work with all different populations, right? Yeah. Not just the West Side, because if I lived in, if I lived in town and I, I needed to get out and take my kids out to Cunia because I knew that you had a great reputation of uh, working with the kids with great results, I, the parent, would probably want to drive my kids out to Cunia. Is that correct? Yes, you can come out to Cunia. We... Um... All kids are welcome, all kids are free. Um, we do focus on low income and homeless populations, mm -hmm. but we, like I said, we want to help integrate everybody. So we don't want to just focus on those populations. We want to bring kids from like Punahou and Iolani to our camp so that those kids can meet our kids and they can all become friends. They grow up and become, and stay friends. And then, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about who you know, you know, right. you got the right connections. Right. And we want to give all the kids the right connections and just, you know, spread the love. Kind of. Wow, that's that's another very key component because you're not just staying here and keeping them here. You're integrating because we all bleed the same. Right. Right. And so most of our volunteers come from the east side too. So right. like I said, we come. We got the the personal trainers from the clubs, but like a lot of like uh, our tennis coach is from the east side, Hawaii Kai. Like so, we try to bring the island to the west, and eventually we want to try to bring the west to the east because we want to try to start moving our camps a little bit, like using Palama Settlement, using the maybe the Honolulu Club, the Oahu Club, doing different events at different clubs and taking our kids places they probably wouldn't otherwise go. Mm -hmm. Very good. So how does one register to get into your program? Go to hopamana.org, and mm -hmm. um, there's a, I think it's on the contact page, but there's a, there's a page there to just register, and you register online. It's free. It takes probably a couple minutes, and you're good to go. Very good. So you mentioned that Hapamana is about three years old. Um, where do you basically get your funding? and your support right at, at this moment? Right now we have a reoccurring, one reoccurring grant, and then we have just uh, community donations. I work at the Tepulani Hospital, so you know I know a lot of doctors and stuff like that, so I get you know, decent donations. In, in the three years, I think we brought in a, close to $25,000. Wow, very good. And so where is Hapa Mana headed for? In the future share with us your future plans like from here you came three years and that's a very big big step thus far and now i know you have more grand um plans in the making we do um we would like to well right now we have our camp solidified we would maybe like to get another spot like maybe an ihs or kahoiki village to host another camp as i said if we get more funding we would like to travel our kids to different camps and the, the main goal is we would like to start a after school program where we could, like I said, uh, have living wage jobs. Mm -hmm. I kind of wrote out a program where it would be 27 jobs that would work over five schools. We would, we would do after school programs that say like YNI, Nanakuli, IHS, Kahuiki, and Kunia would be like our five say. Mm -hmm. And then we would take the, the 20, so there'd be 25 coaches, five at each school, and then two you know, overseers or whatever you call it. And then they would be at the five schools and they just rotate every, every week or so or maybe right. every month. We would try right. to we'd work that out. But all the schools would get all the coaches and all the different programs. And then it would be like two athletic programs and two uh, like educational programs like coding, STEM, art, something like that. Wow. So, Jordan, at the end of the day, 
ultimately, what does Hapa Mana want, it to, what, want its kids to gain from what you're investing into them? Well, we, we want to create um, just, what do you call it, like upstanding citizens in, in the world. You know, we want them to, to, to be productive citizens. So, like, uh, we go uh, five successful traits of a successful person, vision, strategy, persistence, learning, and belief. So we try to instill all those through sports and other things, you know, like vision, just seeing like what you want to do later on, seeing the future strategy, you know, just working it out, using your coaches, using your mentors to, to help you build a strategy. You know, persistence, like it's a big thing in sports, you know, we're working pretty hard. They, they want to quit sometimes, you know, keep going, keep going, all that type of stuff. So, you know, we try to relate sports to real life, but we also try to bring in real life mentors to, to talk to them more about, to talk to them more about than just sports. Well, so you know, there are a lot of great people in Hawaii, in our environment, our community here, that can offer, <clears throat> excuse me, their services to exactly what you need. So when we finish this show, let me talk to you about who you can invite, that they would be very honored to be helping you with your programs. And uh, you know, out there as well, if you have these skills, you know, mentorship, inspirational, they need you. <laughs> they we need do. you. And so not just that we, we, they need money and they need, you know, um, items and s supplies. They need bodies. They need people like us to go in to teach them about diabetes, about nutrition, and then, yeah, mentorship. You know, and any um, business leaders out there as well, I'm asking you, you know, come in and have a mentorship program that these kids can look up to you and follow in your footsteps and and achieve such, such success as many of you have here in Hawaii. And that's why we are such a great state because we're such a giving state. And I know there's so many people out there that say, I have a weekend free or you know what, one week in a month, I can do that. Jordan, just slot me in for this time. And then they'll be calling you because they wanna help you and they just wanna be there for you. So Habamana has accomplished so much in three years time. I'm just surprised that I didn't know as much as, as what I've been learning now, but I will commit that I will volunteer and help as much as I can in any which way, and I'm publicly stating that. So <laughs> you'll hold me to that, I know, I and will. I know we are going to kick off with some great, great projects um, coming up. Um, so how will people get in touch with you? So go to hopamana.org, and um, you have a, a volunteer uh, section on there. You can volunteer there. Mm -hmm. You could also call 808-492-2213. That is actually my direct phone number. It's the number for Hapamana, but it's also my direct phone number. I'll be the one answering the phone. All right, so recognize <laughs> that voice, guys, because he's, he's a dude, okay? And he's kind of tall, okay? So he's kind of like, you better, you better ask, answer the call when he calls you for help and you're offering help. Say, I'll do it, and just go for it, guys, because they need you. Hawaii needs you, our Kiki needs you. So this time I want to say mahalo to you, Jordan, for joining us here today on Think Tech Hawaii. Mahalo to you, We're very, you, very dear. grateful to you and to Claire and for all that you do with our kiki and making a difference in their lives. Mahalo. Thank you. Mahalo.